Hello and welcome to the programme. The images of Garthi baton charging hundreds of protesters at the weekend were shocking. An anti-lockdown protest turned into a riot and further demonstrations are planned for Saturday in Cork and in Dublin on St. Patrick's Day. So can any public protest be legitimate during level five restrictions or are they doomed to be hijacked by conspiracy theorists? We'll discuss that shortly, but first Mark Coughlin has been taking a closer look at events on Saturday. The protest in the city was not the first that saw violence and it certainly wasn't the only one that brought anti-vaccine and anti-lockdown protesters into the capital. For months, smaller protests have been happening and most of us haven't even noticed. This time it was bigger and it was organised. But what was involved in this gathering and how was it planned and most importantly, who took part? What happened on Saturday started long before crowds gathered on Grafton Street. Long before the Garda Public Order Unit was deployed, or bottles were thrown. So what exactly happened? And where does it go next? It started like a lot of things these days on social media. This particular event and Facebook page was launched back in November. But what we saw around that then on the fringes and telegram groups and other places was people flagging that this event was taking place and getting their own supporters to, to get involved. So you have all these other disparate groups, far-right groups and others, trying to leap on it and exploit it. Channels soon popped up on the messaging app Telegram. Posters began appearing on Facebook. Some of the pages have since been deleted. Some talked about QAnon, about paedophiles and about vaccines doing more harm than good. But others were simply opposing the lockdown. You're recommended a group against the lockdown and you join that group. Uh, you're recommended another group against the lockdown. You're recommended an anti-5G group. And you're just constantly going down this rabbit hole. Um, and, you know, as I say, a lot of the time these, um, you know, it's been pushed into people's feeds. It's not something that people are seeking out. By Saturday morning, the leaflets were ready to go. The singers who'd been booked for peaceful protests were up. Nearly everyone there wanted to protest the lockdown. Many were ordinary people opposing a government decision, as many people have done in the past. Some were with their family. Many didn't wear masks, and it was clearly a mass gathering. Others were angry, but not all those who were angry were intent on violence. It was a mishmash of beliefs and perspectives. I think as the day went on, as I was watching the chats and I was seeing that people were coming flooding in from all over the country, essentially, that I realised that it was probably going to be bigger than a lot of people expected. Hard right groups which Gardaí say were intent on violence, mixed with families with pandemic frustrations, with right wing political ideologues, the groups of the online ecosystem were out and about. You'll see that people who go into these groups with real grievances, maybe their business is struggling. And slowly but surely their standard belief systems or their mainstream belief systems are chipped away by the, the messaging that's in these groups. All entrances to Stephen's Green were blocked all around Dawson Street, Leinster House and government buildings were no-go areas. At the top of Grafton Street, there was tension. Bottles were thrown. The public order unit pushed forward. Someone fired a firework. Then another and then another. A key difference between what happened on Saturday and what happened with other protest movements in the past is that the people at the forefront of the protest movement have gone down a rabbit hole to a place where nothing can be believed and everything is conspiring against them. Now, not all but a significant number of people who attended are following them down that path, or more accurately, are being pushed to follow them down that path by the algorithms of social media. This is a psychological phenomenon as much as anything else. In some ways, you become addicted to the narrative of 
um, the world being in a certain way. And it appeals to you, it appeals to your sense of grievance and frustration. After a clash with Gardaí, the crowds thinned out. People headed towards O'Connell Street. Posts were already appearing on Facebook and on Telegram groups. And you saw the talking points afterwards. Immediately, Antifa was blamed for the violence. No evidence for that, obviously. Um, there was discussion around George Soros. I spoke to one of the organisers uh, on Saturday and her belief was that George Soros was funding these uh, Antifa protesters to, to carry out this violence to undermine their movement. Facebook has since removed some of the pages linked to the protests and is working with Gardaí in relation to them. But despite the continuing lockdown, plans are already in train for other demonstrations and similar posts continue to pop up. We have the headquarters of every social media company in, in the world <laughs> in Dublin, you know what I mean? We need to be able to leverage that in some ways um, and to kind of put pressure on the platforms to, to really to uphold their policies. And if they can't uphold their policies, then something else is going to have to be done because at the end of the day, people are living in their online world a lot more now than we ever were. Mark Auckland there. I'm joined now by Fine Gael TD, Neil Richmond, and by the editor of Gripped.ie, John McGurk. John, there was violence at this anti-lockdown protest on Saturday. There was violence at an anti-lockdown protest in August at the Custom House. There was violence at an anti-lockdown protest at Leinster House in September. Doesn't that suggest that the problem is the anti-lockdown protest rather than an extreme fringe? There was violence at the Black Lives Matter protests in Blanchardstown in January. Does that suggest that the problem is the Black Lives Matter protests rather than the... Uh, that, I'm not sure there was a the, firework the, the, the fired There were anyone. rocks thrown at Gardaí in Vanshinstown and Mulhudder. It was widely reported. But before we get into the discussion, I think it's very, very important to say, like, I condemn, and every reasonable person in this country will condemn utterly violence against the Gardaí or against anybody else. But there is no other protest movement in the Western world that has VTs run on, on, on the national broadcaster suggesting that they're a far-right neo-Nazi crypto-fascist movement. I mean, one thing that was missing from that VT, and I watched all five minutes of it, and what was missing, the viewers at home will have noticed, is any single interview with any single person who actually took part in the protest. Now, you didn't interview anybody. I did. I spoke today on the phone to a guy called Billy. I won't give a second name, but he's from the Northeast. He's 47 years old. He voted for Neil's party in the last election because he thought Leo Varadkar was for the person who gets up in the morning. His business has been shuttered for 159 days, and this month he won't make his mortgage payment. He hasn't told his wife that yet. He's at his wit's end. He said, I used to think I was the person who gets up in the morning, but now I don't get up till 11 o'clock. There are, we, there are John we, McGurk, 500,000 people in Ireland who've lost their job and have there, every exactly, reason to be aggrieved. Exactly. And 498,000 of them were not at a protest on Saturday Let's, where bottles of urine were thrown at Garden. Let's go through the numbers, actually, be, be, be fair, in case people at home aren't familiar with them. 50% of people between 18 and 25 in this country are unemployed. It's actually 53%. One quarter of the adult population are unemployed. None of the three of us in this studio are unemployed. None of the three of us in the studio have taken a salary cut. The people who are suffering in this pandemic, the people who take to the streets to protest, are the ones who are being called Nazis and far right for doing it. While Neil comes on tonight, and he hasn't spoken yet, so we'll give him a chance, but he comes on tonight to advocate for banning protests, while last August his, his Taoiseach went to the European Union to advocate for the right of, for people to protest in Belarus. On the 1st of June last year, there was a Black Lives Matter protest in Dublin, attended by a government TD, and your party leader, Neil, the next day in the middle of a level five lockdown at the time, sent a tweet of solidarity, saying, I stand with these protesters. OK, Neil Richmond, people have a right to protest. Absolutely, people do have the right to protest, and I think what we saw on Saturday was a large amount of people who were understandably extremely frustrated they're tired, they're broke, and they're absolutely hurting at the moment. No one denies that, but they're being used. They are being used by an extremely sinister far-right element who are preying on their vulnerabilities to propagate their conspiracy theories, to attack people in authority, and try and lead them down this primrose path that there's an easy solution to the very complex problem of a global pandemic. Well, they might say, though, that we had a chance to eliminate COVID during the summer and to introduce hotel quarantine, that they have a legitimate 
right to demonstrate against your government's policy? Are you trying to silence them? Absolutely not. But I think we have to remember that these restrictions won't go away by 2,000 people coming out in the street to a super spreader event. They won't go away when we're actually starting to turn the tide once again and the hope of the vaccine provides the light at the end of the day. And to think that we're trying to silence free speech, we're at the level five lockdown. People are breaching rules in relation to distance of five kilometres from their home, of, of organising these mass events. And again, it comes back to who's at the heart of it. They're preying on vulnerabilities. They're trying to say there's an easy solution, that they're easy answers, and they're bringing people out in the street. But at the end of the day, the vast, vast majority affected didn't come out. Because yes, they may be frustrated with the lockdown, they may be suffering, but they know a mass gathering of people is not the sensible or responsible thing to do at this time. And I'd appeal to those decent people who are suffering, and I work with them every day, John. That is my job. And I appeal to them to do the right thing. We are starting to push back against this. Only 300 odd infections the, the today. Only the only people in this country who are organising protests, Neil, are the people with nothing left to lose. Do you no, want, John. No, hold on a second. Let me make the point. Let me make the point. Let me make the point. Let me point. Let me make the point. Every conspiracy theory from 5G to fluoride and all these things. But you're not defending. I think Neil will. I am not defending conspiracy theorists. Conspiracy theorists are conspiracy theorists. They'll always exist. I'm saying the only people who are organising protests in this country are people with nothing left to lose. You want people to speak out reasonably against the pandemic? Dr. Martin Feely spoke out reasonably against the, against the lockdown. Your government and HSE told him his position was untenable. Una McGurk, a respected barrister, spoke out against the lockdown. Your government sacked her the other day. We have a record in this country of people who want to dissent, people who want to speak out and say, actually, I think the fact that we have had the longest lockdown in Europe, longer than Greece, Poland, Germany, Estonia, Romania and Bulgaria combined, and with more deaths than most of those countries. The fact, all those facts, people want to protest those, those things. When, when reasonable people speak out, your government sacks them. John and then McGurk, when ordinary people come out and protest, John, John your McGurk, government calls them Nazis. John McGurk, I don't want to interrupt you, but I mean, if we look at the evidence from the protest, the issue seems to be the company that the anti-lockdown protest is keeping. There was flyers handed out on Saturday promoting conspiracy theories that 5G was causing COVID. It's part of a plan to depopulate <laughs> the world. Do you believe that? No, they're all nonsense. But you know what's interesting? Last year, there was a protest at Dáil Éireann, of which Trocra attended against racism. That protest, and it was an anti-fascist protest, that protest was also attended by Irigi, the people who shot a journalist in Northern Ireland two years ago. Primetime did not run a segment asking Trocra or any of the other NGOs, Amnesty, etc., why are you standing beside people who endorse terrorism in Northern Ireland? You're only ever interested in calling people far right and calling people people Nazis and do you, you don't ever there, do you, you don't think ever a hold people do you to not account. Think there is you, a problem. When did you drag a government TD in here? Do you not here? think there is a problem John McGurk with conspiracy theories I do. being disseminated as part of a lockdown? I, there is a problem I do. And, do you know, ask me about any conspiracy theory and I will tell you and I will tell the people at that protest, most of whom by the way also agree that those conspiracy theories well, are nonsense. Where were the stewards telling that them they to go are away? Nonsense. Where were the stewards trying to calm things Why down? are you trying to hold me responsible for the organisation? I, was, I, was, I, I wasn't there so I can't. Support the march. I said I, I support people protesting. I think people should be protesting more at the record of this government. I do not support or endorse conspiracy theories and don't try and put those words into my mouth. But what I will say is this, it is remarkable that last year at the height of a level five pandemic, your constituency colleague, a government TD, attended outside the American embassy, a Black Lives Matter protest that was completely in breach of the regulations. This television program didn't even bring that TD in here and ask him why. But ordinary people protest the lockdown and all of a sudden, Nazi panic. I mean, Neil there, there's, there's Neil an inconsistency there and that's part of the reason why people are protesting because they see through a lot of this nonsense. Neil Richmond, what's your government going to do about disinformation being spread on Facebook. I was watching last night a key voice in this, this movement broadcasting on Facebook yeah. last night, encouraging people to attend future, pro future protests, saying spread the word about Paddy's Day, we want to get our freedom back. And that was after everything that happened on yeah, Saturday. Absolutely. Where's the urgency? Now this is the urgency and that's why the Tarnish has spoke with the social media companies on Sunday. Spoke with uh, them. And why they've consistently been called into Iraq. This committees has been grand committees and we've seen actions we find across them? the world. We can find some of them and in fairness to the Gardaí, they have been able to intercept a lot of these, both on social media and using messaging apps. But I think it's really clear to remember, Louise, that people are using the veneer of free speech and constitutional rights to justify the most depraved online activity. And they're saying that, oh, it's because people are frustrated. People 
people are being played by a vicious movement. John says he's surprised there isn't more protests, that people are coming out, because people know it's not the right thing to do at the height of a pandemic. It's not going to crush the numbers. It's not going to get us out of restrictions. It's merely providing a but, platform but for violent is, protesters to attack the very okay. frontline workers but, okay. that we're seeking what, to protect. What is going to get us out of it, Neil? Because your government hasn't done it. We have had the longest lockdown in Europe. But John, there's no... You, you're, this is the thing. You've, the you've have been in nursing homes. You've consistently said there's an easy solution to this. I haven't. You tried to point to Sweden. I haven't you tried that. to point to I've Estonia. Never to point to Sweden. You're, provi you're providing simplistic answers to something very complex. But look what's happened. Well, look what's happened in the last few days. Look at the consistent fall in case numbers, the people coming out of hospitals, coming out of ICU, government have made many mistakes. I'm not going John, to pretend like they have done? What would you have done last year differently? Well, I wouldn't have signed in a vaccine December, contract. In December, what would you have done differently? I, what I, well, I'll tell you what I, I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have signed a vaccine contract with the European Union. That means 30% of people in Northern Ireland would have been vaccinated. Would you have locked down in December? I'll tell you what I would have done. At the very beginning last year, I would have banned all incoming flights into the country. Would you have country. locked down in December? I wouldn't have had to because at the very beginning of the pandemic, I would have banned all incoming flights into the country. I would have done what Simon okay. Harris didn't do and taken okay. a meeting with nursing homes at the very beginning instead of ignoring for six weeks when half the deaths have been in but that. But John, okay. you were perfectly I mean, okay. Final word to Neil, very, very briefly, final word. I think we're providing say that everything is simple and this could all be avoided. We're in a very tough part of the pandemic. People have made massive sacrifices. The answer to this is Other not... Other countries are not in not, a tough part okay. of the pandemic. It's not giving okay. conspiracy theories a platform we, we and going to. out in the streets at this very dangerous time. We have to finish now. Neil Richmond, thank you. John McGurk, thank you. Mary. Well, we all know the devastating impact COVID-19 has had, especially the number of people who've lost their lives and others who've got and remain critically ill. That's why most of us understand the need for restrictions. But one aspect of our lives that's been upended by them is how we say goodbye to the ones we love. Funerals have become incredibly difficult.